Pat Love back with Pat's Two Cents, starting with God's Word. Now, we are going to read from Matthew, verse chapter 7, verse 17 and 18. Listen up. We have to, I'm still as Pat's Two Cents, we have to remember that what's inside will come out. Input, output. What are you ingesting? What are you taking in? What are you consumed with? What takes up your time? Where is your attention? What are the things you really like? All right. And what are your capabilities? Thank God he knows some things are the way they are because we work with limited means. I'll explain that in the Pat's Two Cents section. Listen up. Matthew 7, 17. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Later on, he says, he actually comments that you will know them by the fruit they bear. Now, some of you are saying, well, what the heck is fruit? Well, here we go. Ephesians chapter 5. Be ye not therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes in darkness, but now... Are ye light in the Lord? Walk as children of light. For the light, excuse me, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And now I'm going to read very quickly Galatians chapter 5. All right, Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to read what the fruits of the Spirit look like, okay? You know, if you look at an apple tree, Pat's two cents. You know, if you look at an apple tree, what you see are apples. You don't see oranges, you see apples. This is what happens when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, when you are walking in the spirit and as a result, bearing much fruit. Here is your fruit. But the fruit of the spirit, verse 22, is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Now, temperance is another word, Pat's two cents, for self-control. Against such, there is no law. You're operating in the fruits of the Spirit. Righteousness, holiness. There's no need for law when you're already doing what's right. The law is there to show us what's wrong. Okay, so this is Pat's two cents. I'm talking now. When you're walking in the spirit, it's like walking in the rain and you've got galoshes on. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, they're like a rubber shoe that covers your shoes to protect them from getting wet inside or out so that the water doesn't seep in in case you walk into a puddle. The water doesn't get into your socks and, you know, that's a mess. So you wear these galoshes that cover your shoe and they go up to maybe mid-calf. And they're protecting everything, even the bottom of your pants or, you know. So when you are walking through bad weather and you are dressed for the occasion, raincoat, waterproof, and galoshes. 
guess what? You are not going to get wet. It will not affect you. You can walk through the rain and say, oh, it's raining, isn't it? Oh my, my, it sure is wet out here. But inside, you're warm, you're comfy, your clothes have got you nicely insulated and dry. Well, that is a form of walking in the spirit. You could be in a stormy situation where everybody around you has a funky attitude, where they're telling you all, they're having a bad day, they're just tripping. But you're dressed for the occasion because you're filled with so much of the Holy Spirit that this stuff just comes off of you like water off of a duck's back. And you walk around and you look and say, oh, Lord, thank you for the joy you put in my soul. Thank you for the peace you've given me. They're really tripping. Oh, my. But I'm bone dry. I'm not affected by it. That is what you call fruits of the Holy Spirit. Somebody cusses you out? Do you cuss them out? No, because a good tree bears good fruit. A good tree cannot bear rotten fruit, and a rotten tree cannot bear good fruit. So you know where you are by the fruit you bear. They cuss you out? You cuss them out? Rotten fruit. Whoops! Uh, go back to the manufacturer, something's out of kilt. Now, you get something else. Somebody accuses you of doing something that you did not do. So what are you going to do? Meet them after work or after school and, and get up in there behind and put them up and tear them down and knock them down and make sure they go home hurting or make sure they can't go home because the paramedics have to take them to the hospital. That is not bearing good fruit. I listened to a conversation one time. This was an interview. And this lady was interviewing an inmate. And um, uh, she was asking him, so how do you feel about what you've done to the people you know that you harm? F them, F them, F their mother, F their daddy, F their grandfather, F them. Childish. There was no rhyme or reason. I don't look at a person like that as a monster. You know what I see? I see emotional retardation because the atmosphere, the environment, the surroundings that that person grew up in was sub sub level they were they were not at a normal range they were way below normal how are they going to function as an adult when their parents when their brothers and sisters their friends everyone around them talks like a child reacts like a child what if that person was abused left and right and beaten and their sense of reasoning was beaten out of them. And all they know is beat, hurt, and F you. Beat, hurt, and screw you. Beat, hurt, and you go to hell. Beat, I mean, just trust me. If that's all the person knows, they have to know Jesus in order to come up out of that. Because the rotten tree cannot bear good fruit. So if you find yourself in that situation, you have foot and mouth disease, all you can do is cuss people out. You get in an argument. You can't debate or reason with them or have a conversation to gather understanding and to relay more understanding so that person can better understand you. No, what you end up doing is you're cussing and you're fussing and you're hooping and you're hollering and you're kicking and you're punching, and you're throwing, and you're hissy fitting, and you're having adult temper tantrums, and you're going to have your way. It's my way or the highway. There is a level of development that's not there. And the only place, the only venue you can get that from is from the vine. 
being attached to Jesus Christ, being filled with his Holy Spirit, pursuing him in prayer. You have to pray to God in the name of the Son. Tell him what you want. Come boldly to the throne of grace. Come on now. You've got needs. Obviously, you're dysfunctional. Obviously, you're damaged goods. Well, guess what? So are we all. We're developmentally disabled in some areas and geniuses in other areas. Some of you are emotionally retarded. Not an insult. Sometimes it's your environment that has not developed you. You know what that's like? Let me explain this. It's like a person who has been raised in a household where all they got fed was chips, peanuts, candy, ice cream, junk food. Nobody took time to cook meals for them. Nobody took time to give them a balanced diet. Well, nine times out of ten, if every time they had a little hissy fit or a little temper tantrum or a little emotional breakdown, mommy or daddy bribes them with goodies because mommy and daddy don't want to deal with you. Mommy and daddy don't have time. They don't want to be bothered because you're too much. You are too much work, baby. You are high maintenance and they don't have the time or the energy. So they might be dysfunctional themselves and you end up not getting your nutritional needs met. What ends up happening? You're sleeping in class sleeping on the job, your body, going to the doctor, you got this problem, that problem, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart issues, kidney issues, you got issues. And the reason you have issues is because you weren't taken care of well as a child. Your basic needs were not met. Well, that happens in children psychologically, emotionally, physically. You hear what I'm saying? And what happens is if you have been beaten or you have been deprived of love, attention, or nurturing of any kind, if you have been deprived of functionality where your day has a set routine and this time you do your homework, that time you take out the trash, now it's time for the family to eat together and you talk and you share and you fuss and you do whatever, but you are together interacting. If there's none of that happening in your life, if you've been raised by the system and it's been butt whooping over here, and butt whooping over there, and you get bruised and a black guy over there. And before you know it, you're so screwed up and hurt emotionally. You can't develop. There's nothing to develop from. So there's been no starting point, let's say. But guess what? No matter how limited you are, no matter how broken, damaged, dysfunctional you may be, like I was, guess what? God can put you back together again. You ever hear the little song, the potter wants to put you back together again. So know that you have a remedy. Every one of us had to go to God to climb up out of our pits of dysfunctionality, climb up out of our pits of emotional anguish and emotional crippleness. God is the only one that can make the lame walk again, baby. And God made this lame duck walk. I'm not talking only from what I read in the Bible. I'm sharing with you from a person who was highly damaged, highly dysfunctional, highly uh, slow in development in areas, social graces. I had to get fussed at and, 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 and checked at church. My feelings got hurt a lot of times because there were certain things I didn't know we're not supposed to do. Certain considerations that didn't occur to me. Not that I wasn't raised well. 
But I made choices to come out from under good, good teaching, good upbringing, and get out in the streets and learn some funkadelic ways. That was my choice. So I ask you, go to God. You know where you're jacked up. You know what gets you in trouble. You know what gets you put in jail. You know, when the cop pulls you over, you giving him lip. You know. You keep fussing at your spouse until your spouse has had it up to there and they either leave, you drive them to drink, you drive them out of the house altogether, or you drive them into abuse. And not everybody is driven to abuse, but sometimes these mouths can start some fires that we are never able to put out. And because we're so dysfunctional, we think that's the way it's supposed to be. I put you in your place, I cuss you out. Okay, I get hurt, I get a black eye. But guess what? I cussed you out. You didn't win anything, but in your mind, in your childish way of thinking, you think you did. Because you told them, you put them in your place. And anyway, think on that, Selah. Consider that as you read God's word and you read the fruits of the Spirit. And then check yourself and say, am I lining up with that? Do I look like that at all? Or am I totally opposite? Then ask God to forgive you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness, fill you with his Holy Spirit, because that's where you get the new nature, the new language, the new frame of mind, and emotionally, mentally, psychologically, and spiritually, you begin to grow into a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. God bless you.